Is Donald Trump a cult leader and is the MAGA movement a cult? Why ask this question? Uh, after all, Donald Trump is not a religious leader and MAGA is not a religious movement. I do think we should ask the question, does Donald Trump act like a cult leader? And does his movement show uh, signs of being like a cult? Um, and I want to think through this as a pastor, as a Christian pastor, and I'm primarily sharing this with, with Christians uh, because this is really becoming a, a big issue in our uh, country right now. In fact, Donald Trump is a very, very divisive leader and the MAGA movement has become very, very divisive. And most uh, people who would be watching this video are probably considering themselves to be evangelical Christians or close to that kind of Christianity and, and probably most align with the uh, Republican Party. And as such, uh, most Christians in that vein uh, recognize that the MAGA movement has become very dominant uh, within the Republican political party. But I wanna be clear about three things before I work on answering this question from the perspective of a country preacher with a little bit of education. Uh, but I'd like to um, uh, just uh, share three uh, things for, before we really jump into it. First of all, I don't think that all supporters of Donald Trump have a cult-like devotion to him. Uh, there are people that support Donald Trump for a variety of reasons, but their world will not come to an end or they don't think the world's going to come to an end and, and life as they know it will end if he is not the Republican nominee for president in 2024 or if he is the nominee, he loses the election. Uh, they, for various reasons, say, hey, I think his policies I agree with, but I, you know, I, I'm not so loyal to him that my, my world is going to come to an end if he doesn't win. The other thing to say is that not all Republicans are part of the MAGA movement. I just saw some uh, recent polling out of uh, Iowa and New Hampshire, where in Iowa, 48% of people self-identified as MAGA. In New Hampshire, only 33% self-identified as MAGA as part of that movement. So being a Republican and being in the MAGA movement, they're not the same thing. And I think uh, those that try to paint all Republicans as MAGA are doing a disservice. Uh, and, and I think that it's an error. I don't believe that as well. And I'm third thing is I'm primarily sharing this video with, for those of you who profess to be Christians, who say my loyalty, my faith is primarily in Jesus Christ. I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I'm a citizen of God's kingdom first and foremost, and God has placed me in the United States where I live and, and express my citizenship there, but I, am, I, I profess above all uh, to be a Christian. I want to just read a passage for you very quickly uh, from 1 Timothy 5, 2 through 10, in which well, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, talks about false teachers in the church, but I think it's very applicable to a lot of what we're seeing today. And he says this to the pastor Timothy, teach and urge these things. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil sus suspicions, 
and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Um, in modern terms, this description Paul gives of false teachers and those who follow after them, but we more mainly just look at what he's saying about false teachers. They fit into several categories that we might have uh, used modern terms to, to describe them. One is narcissistic personality disorder, which uh, researchers have found has the following traits. Somebody with this mental illness of narcissistic personal, personality disorder will have inflated sense of self-importance. They will be obsessed with power and fame. They will feel entitled. They will exploit people for their own gain. They will be arrogant, they will lack empathy, and they will crave the admonition, admir admiration of others. Uh, another one, uh, we used to call it sociopath, and now we call it antisocial personality disorder. These, uh, these kinds of behaviors go into uh, diagnosing that, somebody that is prone or committing crimes, who disregards rules, who acts impulsively or acts aggressively, who is very cold towards others, who is a pathological liar, who has the ability, doesn't really have the ability to maintain close relationships, and they have trouble keeping a job because of all the other things, and they also take very much ill-advised risks. In other words, they won't listen to the advice of others. Uh, Psychopathy, which a psychopath, uh, there are traits uh, of that kind of mental illness. Uh, they'll talk about compulsive lying, uh, the compulsive manipulation of others, that they won't feel any remorse or guilt over the things that they do that hurt other people, that they will be cruel to others without feeling guilty about it. They will take advantage of others. Uh, they won't accept uh, personal responsibility for the things that they've done. And uh, uh, also, they will engage in many sexual relationships. Uh, the false teachers uh, that the Apostle Paul warns about us in the church share these traits. We see that over and over again in the warnings of the Bible about false teachers, about false prophets, will make these kind of character observations of those people. And so we just walking through these traits, we can see a picture of a cult leader. They are narcissists with tendencies towards sociopathy and psychopathy, to put it in modern terms. And my concern as a Christian pastor is that I'm seeing many Christians getting caught up and following Donald Trump and being part of the MAGA movement to such an extent that they are becoming disloyal to Jesus Christ. In many places in the Bible, God's people are told that they cannot serve two masters as, as objects of, of loyal, personal, almost religious-like devotion. Uh, Christians cannot serve Donald Trump in that capacity and still serve Jesus Christ. 
and I'm going to be sharing some more. I've been, I've, I've done a couple videos already on my channel uh, about the culture war and Christians' relationship to the government, where we look at different Bible passages, and I try to share uh, and get us to focus on what the Bible teaches as Christians to see how sh we should engage uh, in political discourse. I, I'm not one. I didn't really want to be doing this. I, I. I I'd rather be doing other things uh, in terms of ministry, in terms of teaching. But what I'm seeing is deeply disturbing to me that we as Christians, are, uh, many of us are getting led astray by Donald Trump in the MAGA movement. And I'm deeply, deeply concerned about it. And that's the heart uh, that I'm coming from. And I want to share some of these videos with you. For this video, I'm just going to look at strategies of cult leaders, having looked at them and studied them before on the graduate level, uh, what they do to build a following and think a little bit about what Donald Trump is doing in building his MAGA movement. So the first things that cult leaders do is they come in and they prey on the fears and insecurities of people that what they'll do is they'll capitalize on the felt needs that are real and genuine and good, and then offer to meet those needs if that person will become a devoted follower. Follow me, and I will take care of all these things that are concerning you in your life, all these things that worry you. I'll give you meaning and purpose and hope, and, and if you just follow me, all of your life will come together, and you'll find all your meaning and your purposes. You know, and Americans have real concerns right now. We're concerned about immigration. We're concerned about national security and terrorism. We're concerned about drugs. We're concerned about international conflict. We're concerned about the economy and paying our bills and taking care of our needs. So we, we have these real concerns. But what's happening with Donald Trump is he's coming in and he's saying, I am the only person that can resolve these issues. It's not uh, my political party and all these people here with me and serving with me. Uh, we as a governing philosophy, we uh, as a party, we, we can come along and, and, and we, can we can help things be better for Americans. He's not arguing that way. In fact, he won't even express loyalty to the Republican Party. What he says is that I'm the one that will do this. If, if you don't elect me, there'll be another Great Depression. If you don't let elect me, all the world will fall apart. And if I'm not president again, if you aren't loyal to me, your very lives are at risk. Everything is at risk. And the, and and your life will just cease to exist as you know it. It will be the most miserable thing and, and you'll never have prosperity or anything again. You've, you've got to be loyal to me because only I, I am the only one that can do this. You see how that is kind of cult-like in, in how they do it? Is he starting with the truth, the felt needs that things in this country aren't right. We're not moving in the right direction. Uh, people are making political mistakes in our, in our leadership and all those things that, that happens. But then he's coming in and saying, it's not, let's try a different governing philosophy. You know, he is saying, you know, bringing in philo uh, governing principles or ideals or philosophy kind of things. But what he's saying, it's mine, it's me. Uh, it, 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 it's got to be me that does it. I've got to be the one to deliver you. Uh, you can't trust any of these other people that, that are running for president, any, anybody else other than me, uh, for you to have peace and prosperity and joy and meaning and happiness in your life. You have got to follow me. And that's what a cult leader does, demands loyalty in exchange for the meeting of needs. It comes to people and says, I'm the only one that can do this. I'm the only one that can provide meaning in your life. Christian, don't you see when we preach the message that Jesus Christ and in him is there only meaning in life? how it creates a rivalry. 
We'll look about look at that a little more in just a second. Another step in this strategy of a cult leader is they come in and they will sow seeds of distrust to all human institutions that could serve as a check and balance over the information you're getting from that cult leader. And so they will sow these seeds of distrust in human uh, institutions. They don't want their followers to trust the government. They don't want their followers to trust churches or community organizations or justice systems. In fact, cult leaders want them to be suspicious of any institution and organization and not trust anyone, but only have their trust for the cult leader. That leader replaces all those institutions as the object of trust. And you see this, and this is where I'm concerned, where you hear deep state. Donald Trump will talk about the deep state like it's his Satan. Uh, the deep state controls everything, controls every aspect of government, controls all of the justice system, controls all the elections, except when it does things that he agrees with, then it's okay. But for the most part, he's saying, don't trust. You can't trust the government. You can't trust the justice system. You can't trust any, any organization. You cannot trust any of this. And any institution that would bring accountability to a cult leader, you see why they so distrust? Because, because then when they start getting in trouble for things that they are doing, because cult leaders tend to skirt out, they think they're above the law, they think the laws don't apply to them, they give themselves moral exemptions. That's why oftentimes you'll see cult leaders committing adultery with the wives of followers, all the while demanding that they be pure. Uh, uh, the, the, the other guys be pure. Don't, you know, I can cheat with your wife, but you can't, you can't do anything that I say you can't do because they put themselves above uh, the law. And so whenever these institutions try to come and bring accountability, they're like, see, I told you, you can't trust them. They're wicked. They're evil. They're coming after me. Why? Because cult leaders know that those institutions will hold them accountable. And, and in order to keep that support of his followers and avoid account accountability, uh, a cult leader sows this distrust. That's what Donald Trump is doing, continually sowing seeds of distrust in the government, the justice system, and the election system. It's all rigged. It's all against him. It's a big conspiracy against him. And he tells his followers that no organization that doesn't give 100% loyalty to him can be trusted. And that, my friends, is, is a straight out of Cult Leader 101 textbook. Sow those seeds. Another thing the cult leaders will do to prevent the forming of personal relationships with anyone who might lead that follower out of his cult out of loyalty to him is they will demonize and dehumanize all of their opponents. So their followers will be afraid to listen to them, to have any kind of relationship with them. They do this um, all the time, you know, the, the, a cult leader, and, and you, you've seen this in history, where the followers are so unable to trust family and friends or anybody that has a genuine concern from them uh, who, who would question what the cult leader is doing, that cult leader sows such distrust that those family members will break, or, or those cult followers will break all relationships that are, could be meaningful and, and helpful. And anyone who's not on board with the cult leader are evil and wicked to be despised and hated. And you see this, how uh, Donald Trump talks about Democrats and their constituencies. They're wicked, evil, corrupt. He calls them vermin. Uh, he'll talk about migrants poisoning the blood of the country. And, and in this way, uh, he helps his followers and fosters within them this uh, despising and hating of people with differing views. Uh, they distrust the media that doesn't affirm Donald Trump. They think every news story that doesn't affirm Trump is fake news. It's a lie. 
It may, it, it, and oftentimes they're true stories, they're real, but, but his followers can't accept that because they've been so ingrained in their mind that, that it's all a lie meant to get Donald Trump and, and they can't trust him. So everybody that has a different view uh, is evil. They're wicked, they can't be trusted, they're corrupt. So you can't cor trust any institution and you can't trust any people. And then finally, what cult leaders do is they demand 100% loyalty from their followers. Once you're in, you've got to be loyal or there's consequences. Uh, this is especially true of those that are lieutenants that lead in behalf of the cult leader that work their way up in the cult to have some leadership and some responsibility. Any disloyalty among those leaders means a cult leader will not only cast you out, but will destroy you. And those lieutenants know that. They know that if there's anything they do that he perceives as disloyal, it's gonna be, it's gonna mean destruction. And that's why you'll see many of uh, these lieutenants willing to go to prison for the cult leader to keep the cult leader out of prison. They will go to prison on crimes that the cult leader is actually doing in order to be loyal so they won't be cast out of the cult. And since the 1990s, there's been a term out there, uh, Rhino, Republican in name only. And it has been used of Republican politicians that don't pass ideological purity tests. Now what's happened, it's, and it's very interesting to me, is that when it comes to historic Republican positions, Donald Trump is one of the biggest rhinos ever. He has taken the Republican Party away from his roots. And I find it very ironic now that any Republican that is not personally loyal to him, he will call a rhino. And he will use that as a way to tell his followers that these people are being disloyal to me. You need to disown them, destroy them, because they're not being loyal to me. In other words, being a rhino now means that you're being disloyal to Donald Trump. It's not about the Republican Party anymore. Well, he calls Chip Roy and Ken Buck, who are members of the most conservative Republican Freedom Caucus, rhinos because they don't, they don't support him. He calls Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley rhinos because they are running against him. He's calling governors uh, Kim Reynolds and Chris Sununu rhinos because they didn't support him. Do you see how it's all about personal loyalty to him? Being a rhino no longer is, you know, do you hold Republican Party positions? It's now, are you personally loyal uh, to Donald Trump? And the MAGA movement has infiltrated the Republican Party uh, to such an extent that almost all Republican politicians are afraid to say or do anything that would be seen by Donald Trump as less than loyal. They not only have to embrace his propaganda, many of the false statements he says and the bad things he says and try to defend it because they have to, they, they don't want to be seen as disloyal. They have to sell his agenda because they don't want to be in his bad graces. And this is why I'm concerned about Christians following Donald Trump and being part of his MAGA movement. Because our loyalty, first and foremost, is to the teaching of the Bible. So much of Donald Trump's character and conduct is not consistent with the teachings of Jesus Christ. Imitating Donald Trump requires his followers to turn their backs on the clear teaching of the Bible. God has also established both the church and human governments. He has clearly commanded Christians to rec recognize that he ordains governments and they rise and fall according to his will. And he calls us to live as good citizens within the governments he has established for us. And that includes not only here in the United States, but there are Christians in North Korea, in China, in Russia, and Iran. In fact, Christianity is growing much 
um, faster in places where the church is much more persecuted and where there isn't all the freedoms that we enjoy. So we have to recognize <coughs> that, that God is establishing these governments. And so we have to be careful about how we think and talk and act when we talk about governments. Uh, the other thing is, a third point is the Bible calls us to love our enemies. It calls us to guard our speech. It calls us to keep our conduct pure. The Bible tells us that bitterness is the root of evil and, and that those who hate are really not Christians. So we've got to be very careful as Christians to recognize that God has something very, very different to say about how we conduct ourselves as Christians than the way Donald Trump and the MAGA movement behaves. Another thing uh, that is concerning to me is that good Christians can disagree on government policies without having thinking them of not as being good Christians. They're taking biblical principles and trying to apply them to how we solve problems as a society. Different people, different groups of people may have different ways of trying to resolve those issues. And I've, I'm seeing an increase, though, of people saying that someone cannot be a true Christian unless they support all of Donald Trump's policies. And many Christians are taking their loyalty to Donald Trump to such a degree that they are questioning the Christian faith of other brothers and sisters in Christ who are not loyal to Donald Trump like they are. And that is very toxic because it requires a greater loyalty to Donald Trump than to Jesus Christ. My loyalty is to Jesus Christ, first and foremost. My loyalty is to the kingdom of heaven. I am ambassador of Christ. That's the most important thing for me. And nobody's going to tell me that I am not a Christian because I don't embrace a political candidate of the United States that is showing a lot of signs to me of behaving like a cult leader and creating a cult following. Angry, bitter, vengeful, full of retribution. It just, it's, it's not what God has called us to as, as Christians. And it just breaks my heart to see people behaving and acting that way. And I am deeply, deeply concerned that people might follow Donald Trump to the point of turning their back on their Christian faith for the sake of power in the here and now, they will give up their eternal soul. And that worries me. It also worries me that the church is discrediting itself greatly and sacrificing its beliefs and its morals for the sake of being part of some political uh, attempt at, at gaining power. And I think we need, as a church, to think long and hard about these things. So I would encourage you, if you're a Christian, to really be careful, to take a step back, to maybe look at other media other than the ones that you've been looking at. Maybe see what others are pulling out of Donald Trump's speeches and his rallies and his posts on Truth Social. See what, see what those that don't agree with Trump are saying. What are they pointing out? Take the time to consider something alternative to maybe what you're getting and to, and to accept uh, some views that maybe aren't even friendly. They're not even Christian views. Maybe they're there are people that wouldn't be Christian in a million years, so you think, but you know, God can work in hearts in ways that we could never imagine. But just listen. 
listen to other Christian voices instead of just discounting them as rhinos because Donald Trump calls them rhinos because they don't agree with him. Take the time. I would encourage you as Christians to really be wise and discerning about the direction that we're going. And that's, I guess that's all I have to say. I said a lot. I'm going to make some more videos uh, about this because it's really on my heart. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, just subscribe to the channel if you want to hear any more of what, uh, what ramblings of a country preacher uh, might be there. Um, and I don't claim to be the most articulate. I don't claim to be the wisest. I just want to uh, share this with God's people and encourage Christians uh, to greater faithfulness and loyalty to Jesus. Thank you for listening.